So Starfield's been out for just over a month, and I for one am absolutely loving the game so far, but I did have the thought that this may not necessarily be the case for everyone. Like, not everyone's played a Bethesda game. I could very easily imagine someone to jump into this game with the vision of just exploring the vast amount of solar systems and planets this game has to offer, totally jumping in the deep end then find themselves struggling fairly quickly. Flying around space with nowhere to go, no aim, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to make a tutorial on it. And hopefully, it'll just help them people who've started playing and maybe given up at this point. It's such a phenomenal game, and I am having one of the best experiences I've had in a long time. So yeah, I really hope you'd enjoy. Okay, just before we get started, I just want to say that I'm not going to be covering any shipbuilding or any outpost building at this time. This is intended for you to get started playing the game, so you don't get confused by the vastness of it. But with that out the way, let's move on to tip number one. So this is probably the most important part of this video for any new player, especially if you haven't played any Bethesda titles before. The last thing you want to be doing is getting your ship and then just wandering across the solar system without playing any of the story or any of the missions, because you'll find yourself doing all sorts of things that will just hinder your experience in the long run, and you just won't get the most out of the game in the end. My advice for this is just play the story. At least a good few missions, maybe 8, 9, 10 missions, however many missions it takes for you to feel a lot more comfortable with the game. You'll understand the game a lot more and you'll have your bearings a lot more on how the game actually works. So yeah, just take it slow and you will not go wrong. So here we are in the game and Starfield has a lot of different menus that you need to familiarise yourself with and we're going to go through some of them right now. The only one I'm not going to go through for story purposes is the top one. So we're going to go with the star map first. Now here you can see where it is you are, so as you can see we're on a moon just by Uranus. Then we can go back and see the solar system that we're in, so this is our actual solar system with the Earth right there. And then you can go a step further and you can go to different solar systems. Now as you can see, we have white stars and red stars. The white stars are the ones that you can actually access from where you are, but then the red ones you have to do a little bit more searching to try and get to them. Now when I first looked at this, I thought, well that's weird, why can't you just go in a straight line? Because it's not actually a straight line. If you look, it's a little bit more warped. It's a 3D space, not a 2D space, this map, which I find really, really interesting. Okay, so moving on to the ship menu in the bottom left. As you can see on the left, you've got ship systems where you can move some energy to different parts of your ship to maybe make your laser stronger, make your engine faster, or use a grav drive. On the bottom left, you can see an overview of your ship, so you can see how much fuel you've got, how much health it's got, and how much cargo it's got. On the right, you can see that you've got an inspect button where you can look around the ship. You can see what your crew is up to. You can assign them different things, and you can also see what's inside your cargo hold, so any resources that you want to take out or you want to store this is where you do that so moving on to the missions menu next so i've got it on the miscellaneous tab so you don't see any story missions and there's not going to be any sort of spoiler or anything like that unless you consider these spoilers um but basically if you want to do say the charity of the wolf you select it a little sub menu will open and then you click this one and you see that little blue almost like a blue line next to where it says charity of the wolf that means that your mission is selected now, if you press the Y button, it'll show you where that mission is on the star map. So, as you can see, it is right here. And then if we wanted to go to it, press X to land and it will land us in Aquila City where this mission starts. You can also, from here, just do set course by pressing X straight away and it will take you straight there. And then you've got the choice to either land or go wherever you want from that location. Okay, so the next menu we're going to be looking at is the inventory. Here you can find all your weapons, spacesuits, boost packs, helmets, all the clothes that you're going to be wearing, ammunition, throwables, first aid, notes, resources, and miscellaneous stuff. Or you can just look at every single item that you've got. But there's a few things I want to talk about in here. So if you come here into the weapons, as you can see here under this cutter, see where it's got cutter and then the number three next to it? That means that I have three of them in my inventory. Now... They weigh about four kilograms, so you don't want to be carrying three cutters around. They're not worth a lot of money, and you know, you only need one. So what we're going to do, you can either sell them at a vendor, which we'll speak about later on in the video, or you can just drop them. And I'm just going to drop these because they're on my ship and they're safe. So now, as you can see, my mass has gone down to 197 over 185. 
The mass is very important in this game. If you're overweight, like I am over encumbered right now, and if I start running, I will burn through oxygen quicker, which will lead to CO2 poisoning a lot faster as well. So we need to keep that mass under the limit. So my limit is 185. We need to keep it below that. We can also see to the left of that, we've got credits, and that is the amount of currency in game that you have so at the moment i've got eighty nine thousand, which actually isn't a lot i believe in this game moving on we've got spacesuits here again don't be carrying a lot of these around because as you can see from the right it says 13.7 kilograms each spacesuit weighs some way i think around seven or something like that i can't quite remember but yeah just make sure that you're on top of your mass at all times because if you just run around picking everything up you're going to struggle with this game it's going to take you absolutely ages to get anywhere and you'll just get fed up in the long run so if you are over encumbered you can either sell them to vendors which we will speak about later on or you can just drop stuff just keep that in mind other things you should take into consideration any bit of ammo that you see pick it up because it weighs literally nothing so as you can see, I've been picking up as much as I can. Also, in the aid, you've got all different types of things. So you've got like things that can cure certain ailments. So this, for example, treats con contusions, lacerations, and puncture wounds. So bandages, so anything like cuts and stuff like that. You've also got like drinks and stuff like alcohol that gives you like plus nine persuasion chance for five minutes and minus 15 percent o2 recovery for five minutes you've also got little things like apples which can just restore health also you got things like hearts these are like injections almost and as you can see with this one plus 20 percent health for two minutes and plus 200 damage resistance for two minutes so take into consideration what it is you're carrying. Also, one more thing I want to speak about is med packs. Whenever you see a med pack, pick them up because they weigh nothing also. That's pretty much the aid part of it explained. Also, resources are kept here. And resources are probably one of the most heaviest things you're going to encounter. So what I suggest you do with these is either store them in the ship, give them to a follower, or you can store them in your room inside the Constellation Lodge. Okay, the last menu I want to talk about is the skills menu. So when you level up, you get skill points. As you can see in the bottom left, I've got three skill points to spend in this playthrough. So if you want your pistols to do more damage, for example, you would go into this skill and you would unlock it just by pressing A. Also, you can do things like weightlifting. So in the weightlifting, you can increase your total carrying capacity by 10 kilograms. Then it goes to 25, then it goes to 50 and 100. So the more levels you unlock, the stronger this skill becomes. But also, to unlock that next level, so as you can see on rank 3 here, I need to sprint for 5,000 meters while at 75% or more of your maximum load capacity. So each individual skill, like that pistol one I've just unlocked there, to get the second one, I need to kill 20 enemies with a pistol, and that's how you would rank up your skills. I think that's all you pretty much need to know. This is going to take a lot of reading, just to decide on which way you want your character to go, what build you're heading for with your roleplay. And yeah, just have fun with it, because there is a million and one things you can do on this menu alone. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about in the skills menu is boost pack training. So... If you're struggling, thinking, why can't I use my boost pack? It's probably because you haven't unlocked this. Because look at it, rank 1, you can now utilize boost packs. And obviously, you're going to want this because it helps you with fall damage. And it also helps you just get around in general and uses less O2 consumption. So the last menu I want to speak about is the system menu. Now here you can quick save and I do recommend quick saving quite a lot whenever you remember to. You've also got a normal save button, you've got a load because let's face it Bethesda games have a, well they're notorious aren't they for having bug quest lines and stuff like that. So if it ever does happen, it hasn't happened in Starfield but it has happened in all the other games I've played by Bethesda. Uh, I have had missions that I've just bugged and I can't continue with them unless I go back and do something maybe different or it might just not happen in the next time I try it. Um, there's also a help section and this is where you can if you're stuck you can come here first and have a little look and it's got as you can see so much in there that might just help you out if you're struggling a little bit also you got like settings so you can change like key bindings you can change your display settings you can change your gameplay to make if you find it a little bit too easy maybe try it on hard or if you feel like an absolute beast put it on very hard you've also got accessibility here so you can do general subtitles dialogue subtitles all that type of good stuff also, you got the photo mode. Now, the funny thing about this, this can be accessed in two different ways. So you can access it like this, or you can access it by pressing the LB button. Unfortunately, I don't know what that is on keyboard and mouse. You will have to forgive me. And then you can press your right stick in, and this will also bring up the photo mode as well. And you can take photos with loads of different filters, loads of different poses and stuff, which are quite good for YouTube thumbnails, I must say. You've also got return to game and then quit. So 
pretty self-explanatory. I just wanted to go over it. Okay, I know that was a long one, but there was a lot of information I needed to go over in that. But let's move on to the next tip. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is your trusty scanner. So now you can use your scanner to try and find different resources on different planets. But you can also use it to see what them landmarks are in a distance. So as you can see with this one, it's a structure. So we know that that is over there now. We can also use the scanner to fast travel back to the spaceship if we need to. Also, while in the scanner, if you bring out your weapon, it'll actually bring out the cutter, which makes it easier for mining the resources that you're finding along the way. So another bonus tip with the cutter, as you can see, if you press LT, the center is getting tighter and tighter. This is making your beam a lot more condensed and it makes it a lot easier to mine minerals. So you've seen how quick that was, but watch if I don't press LT. It takes a little bit longer. So yeah, that is going to save you a hell of a lot of time. So you can also use your scanner in space, which will reveal all other planets and moons that are close to you. So as you can see here, we're in the Sol system and we can see how far away Earth, Mercury, Mars, Titan, Enceladus, Jupiter, Tethys, all them other places are from where we are. Also, your ship scanner will bring up any other ships in the surrounding area as well. So as you can see, we've got some UC SEC ships around. All pretty high level, so you probably don't want to be messing with them. Also, you can scan gas giants such as Saturn in the main menu in the star map. So now if we press LB, we'll be able to scan that. And now that is, because it's a gas giant and we can't actually land on it, that is 100% surveyed. So now we can go and sell that data, which I'm going to show you right now. So in the star map, if we go to Alpha Centauri, and we see up here, we've got the planet Jemison. Next to it, we should have the eye. Now, this is a place where we can go to to sell all of our planetary survey data. Now, we are going to be heading to the eye, which is here. And we're going to go in and dock on it and go and find Vladimir to sell our survey planets. So, once you've boarded the eye, you can run right into the back here and you'll find Vladimir. And he's the man we're going to be selling all of our planetary survey data to. So you want to speak to him and then say, I've got some survey data for you. And then you go to all. And as you can see, here's that Saturn survey data that we got before. Now we can sell him this for 1,125. Now that is a quick way of making a quick bit of money by just scanning gas giants. You don't need to do it one at a time. You can get as many as you want and then come here with a bulk and then just sell it to him. But just remember in the top right, he's only got 20,000. So at the moment, we could probably only sell about 18, maybe 19 at a push. But there's also other planets. It doesn't have to just be gas giants. It can be actual planets with minerals and stuff. But you've got to find all the minerals. You've got to find the flora and fauna. And it'll tell you all in the left how many you need to be finding on each individual planet. And there's also a few like secret things that you need to find. So like signs of life and all weird stuff like that. And once you found all them, you can bring them survey data. And they will be worth a lot more when you sell them to Vlad. So Starfield has a lot of different vendors and I want to start out by talking about the Trade Authority kiosks. Here you can only sell items, so if you've got some stuff that you just want to get rid of quickly, maybe some helmets, you can sell them here. On some other planets as well you can find ship service technicians and they will repair your ship. You can also modify your ship with them or you can either buy ships off them as well. So as you can see this guy, I think he's got about four that we can buy, yet yeah, we've got four different ships that we can buy. Something to take into account. There's also vendors who sell minerals as well. So if you're building like an outpost or something like that and you're struggling to get them last few pieces, maybe you need some iridium or maybe you need some lithium or whatever it may be, come and check these guys out because they might have what you want. So I think vendors are pretty self-explanatory in general. So each individual one sells its own unique items, if that makes sense. So you may want to do a little bit of exploring if you want to find the right items for you. So here, as you can see, we're on a keeler, which is like sort of like a Western vibe to it. And as you can see, it's got a load of Western vibe weapons as well. Have a little explore and then you'll find the right weapon for you in the end. Just remember as well, if you're going to be selling to these guys, just check the top right at all times because that is how much that they can afford to give you. There's not much else to say about vendors. You buy off them and you sell to them. That's about it. Just have fun with it. So the next thing I want to speak about is your companion's inventory. So what you can do with them, you can speak to them and say, let's trade gear. And it's going to bring up a menu. And in this menu, you can do some pretty crazy things, some pretty OP things as well. So as you can see, she's only got four weapons, two bits of ammunition, and she's carrying all my resources as well. Well, a lot of my resources. But if we go to our inventory by pressing LB, 
we can go on to our weapons and give her some. So I'm gonna give it this skip shot suppressed calibrated Grendel because I've only got like 13 bullets left in it at this moment. So I'm gonna press A and give her that. And then I'm also gonna give her one bullet of it. So that was the seven millimeter, 7.7 millimeter, so this stuff. So I'm just gonna give her one of those, just one. And then I'm also going to give here a frag grenade, just one frag grenade. And what does this do? This now means she has got infinite bullets for that gun. And she, she also has infinite throwables as well. She's also got infinite frag grenades. Before you do give her the weapon, just take a note of what ammo it actually takes before you give her the weapon. And then what you need to do next, once you give her the ammo and the weapon, you need to equip it. And you can equip it by pressing Y. So as you can see, it's got like a little triangle in the top left. That means it's equipped, but same with the frag grenade there. And also, if you want to, you can give a spacesuit as well. So if I, I'm going to wear this one. So if we give her this one, and we can give her a helmet as well. So let's give her, let's give her this one, and we'll wear this one. And then we go back to her, and then we equip those. And then she should be wearing those spacesuits and stuff. There you go, right there. Perfect. Now, we're going to show you what it's like in battle. So as you can see, she has the Grendel and she's using it. And if we're lucky, we might be able to see her throw some grenades. There it is. Now you gotta be careful with those because she sometimes will just throw them and it'll just land at your feet. So yeah, you just need to be a little bit careful with it because it is pretty broken. So I'm still in that battle from before, but I just want to show you how to set some shortcuts which will make your life a lot easier as well. I've already got them set, but I'm just going to reset them. So this coachman, this like shotgun that I've got, if I favorite that and I want it to be in this empty slot to the left here, I've also got an Equinox which is set to the far left, and I've also got a little sniper which is the lawgiver, I've got that set to just the first left. So you've also got like Bowie knives and other knives like that. I like to keep them up, the, up at the top. And then any heels like med packs, hearts and amps I'll have at the bottom. And then to the right a lot more like assault driven. So like the maelstrom. So how do you use this in battle? So let's see. Okay, so we have to come to a different area to find more people to fight. Say now I want to change weapon because there's a lot more of them and I want to go to the maelstrom. I'll just tap right now because it's, it's set, ready to go. So now we can just start rinsing through these guys. Constantly taking cover and watching our health in the bottom right as well. Pretty straightforward FPS shooting. Left trigger to aim, right trigger to shoot. It's that simple. And I think there was one more guy over here that we're going to go and see. Oh, we've just been stabbed there. So we're just going to take these guys out. Oh, they've got this guy next to us. So he's close to us now. So maybe we want to change to our knife at this point and just go for like a, an up close battle. Just like that. Oh my god, I'm missing enough every shot there. Okay, we're going to switch back to the maelstrom because this was doing bits before. Okay, we've got a little reload there. There was a mine in our way. And all at this time as well, our follower is throwing grenades and she is absolutely going crazy with their weapon of choice. Oh, see? But you got to watch out because them grenades will hurt. But yeah, that's pretty much the battle and covered. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is your bounty. Now, your bounty is pretty much like a wanted level. So, before we start anything, I am going to quick save this because it's not uh, it's not the playthrough I'm going for being infamous in this one. What we're going to do, we're going to go and try and find a few things that we can steal. As you can see, these coffee bags, they've got like a little red square next to them. That means that I'm going to be stealing them if I pick them up. And as you can see there, it does say steal. So, let's steal and see what happens. Let's see how much we can get away with. There we go, the owner caught me stealing, but nothing has quite happened just yet. So let's go and try and find somewhere else to steal from. So we got an 82 bounty added there. So here we go. That's one way to get a bounty by stealing. The other one is also to fight. So we got a 650 there. And as you can see, we're gonna get absolutely chased down now. So there we go, we got a gardener there. You can literally 15,000 now. So that bounty is high. Okay, let's try and get out of here now and go and try and clear our bounty. Okay, so we're gonna try and hail one of the ships in space and we're gonna try and pay our fine or either say the jail time, depending on what happens. We have got a pretty high bounty at the moment, so these are the options that you've got. I tried speaking to someone on the planet then, but it wouldn't let me go anywhere near them. So these guys are really pissed off at me, so we're gonna try and pay this as soon as possible. 
So as you can see, pay 33,000 and we can hopefully make it. And there you go, I think we made it. We paid 33,000 to clear that bounty. So we're going to get taken down, we're going to pay the fine and we should be good to go. You can also save the jail time. I just never had enough time there to do anything because they were just beating me down. But yeah, there you go. And the stuff that we stole has been taken off us as well. So yeah. Try and be good in this game. I mean, if you want to play Infamous, then go for it. I mean, being on the run could be a good little twist in this game that you could take. That is bounties for you. I'm going to reload my save now because I've lost a lot of credits there. So the next thing I want to talk about is lock picking. Now to pick a lock, you need to have digi picks. So as you can see, I've got 15 of them right now. These are pretty much just lock picks, but they're just more advanced and this is how they work. So because I've got the lock picking skill a little bit leveled up, as you can see, you can attempt to hack advanced locks and two auto attempts can be banked. You can attempt to hack expert locks and three auto attempts can be banked. Rings now turn blue when the pick can be slotted. I think you should personally get to at least level 2 if it's something that you want to look into. Because as you can see, now the ring is turned blue for me. So I know that that one fits in. I know that doesn't fit in. I know this one fits into the center, if that makes sense. So as you can see here, that looks right to me. So I'm going to slot these two. But you're always thinking ahead. Some people like to work from the center out. But I have found my own little system that works for me. And then we got a three. We do have a three right there. So as you can see, they go in nicely. So that can go there. This one can go there. And then we've got a, we've got a single one as well. So that works. So then we bang that in, bang that in. And then the last one goes in there. And now that lock has been picked, we get access to whatever's in the case or chest. Whatever you've been hacking. So here we've got a load of ammunition, which I will gladly take. Okay, so this video got a little bit out of hand. It's quite long. I didn't expect it to be this long. So I just want to talk about one more thing in this video, and that's just how to get about on your ship. So once you're in your cockpit, if you press the Y button, you keep hold of it. This will allow you to take off. So now we're going to head up into space. Once we are out in space, you can now select between third person or first person by pressing the top left button next to your D-pad. I probably should have mentioned that you can also do this while you're controlling your character as well. Anyway, back to the video. How to use your ship. Your left stick will give you your speed. You can tap your left stick and it'll give you a boost. But you kind of want to keep it in between these little white bars just to your left there if you want to do some quick maneuver and stuff like that. You've also got a laser for your right trigger and you've got a laser for your left trigger. And you've also got like missiles when you press Y. Now, how do you get around the solar system with it? Or the galaxy even? You go to your star map and let's say we want to travel to a completely different solar system in general. Let's go to Narian. So we want to select Narian and then we'll do set course to let's say Somati. And then we're just going to hold X to jump. And now we will perform a grab jump to that solar system. And once we're here at Somati, say we want to land on the planet, go back into the star map. And you can land anywhere on these planets, but first thing you want to do is hold LB to scan. Say if you want to go looking for some, like, resources and stuff, this will tell you where things are. So that's copper, that's lead, and you'll be able to, like, land in the middle of places and get, like, all different ones, if that makes sense. So we're just going to land somewhere randomly. Okay, so let's try, let's try right in the middle here. Let's go there. In fact, no, that looks even better. Let's go there. And we're going to hold X to land. And now we've landed on this planet. Now, I should really be showing you how to head towards missions and stuff like that using this, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You've got a little blue dot, and that will be on where your mission needs to be, and it's the exact same process as this. One last little tip when it comes to the missions and stuff. If you're getting a little bit confused and you've got a load of dots everywhere, it might be worth coming into the mission menu, and then as you can see down the bottom here, where it says show only active targets, if you press that, this will only show you the ones that you have selected at that time, which makes it a lot easier to follow. One final tip is when you land on a planet, don't exit the ship pressing X. Get up first and go and have a sleep in your bed for at least an hour. Why do you want to do this? Because it's going to give you a 10% XP boost for the next 24 minutes, I think it is. 
So yeah, you always want to take that last little hour before you go out. So as you can see now, if we go into here and then press Y, well rested and it is for 24 minutes and it's plus 10p XP gain. So yeah, that is pretty much all you're going to need to get started playing Starfield, I think personally. Let me know if I've missed anything down below. This was a colossal video for me. I haven't made a video in a long time and to do one like this was like crazy. But yeah, let me know if it's helped you. Let me know if you want to see more. And don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, I will catch you in the next one. But for now, I'm off to play some more Starfield. Peace.